Hey guys, let me lead off by apologizing uh, for not putting up a video last week for the Jets, although if you watched my Miami video you the, through its entirety, you knew that that was likely going to happen because I'm, I went to New York City, I went to the Bills game uh, in New Jersey, and it was on Thursday, I, there's no way I could have made it. But, <clears throat> since so many people seem interested in who and what I, I what team and you know what the score and my pick you're interested in my prediction I don't know why I'm sure you're coding it because I apparently have some effect on the outcome there is a tweet in existence it's a reply to somebody who asked me for a prediction anyway that I picked the bills to win 26 20 wasn't too far off right bills got the W 22 17 before I get into that one other thing I want to let you guys know, I did a podcast with a couple friends, Drew and Chris. Uh, it's called Rock, it's the Rock Power Report. You can follow them on Twitter, at Rock Power Report. I will link the, the link to the podcast in the description of the video. It's, it was fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope to do it again uh, in the near future. I, I intend to, as long as they'll have me back. And uh, it's about, it runs about an hour. So, I, I, no, by no means do I expect you to sit there and listen to the whole thing. You can if you like. It's straight bills all the way through. And it's fun. I talk about my experiences at the stadium. Um, everything. Uh, uh, everything about the Bills-Jets game down to the Rex effect of it. And, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. And I, I can't wait to do it again. And hopefully, it, you know, go somewhere. But, like I said, Bills, W, 22-17, improved to 5-4. Three and one in the division, just as important. Uh, they leapt into a wild card spot too. They overtook the Jets, huge. Just grind out that tough divisional win on the road. And uh, I, you know, to touch on my experience in the stadium a little bit, I gotta tell you, well, it was kind of a nightmare getting there from New York City, but that's because we drove. Totally, don't do that, or leave really early. Um, parking there, I should have Googled that, but whatever. I, I, I got there just in time for kickoff, and I was surprised because that game was not sold out. They might have advertised it as such. It was not. There were empty seats behind me, and I was sitting over the 300s. The lower bowl was full, but empty seats everywhere. Bills fans everywhere. Very proud of the representation there, um, and it was a lot of fun. It was stressful at times, which certainly we'll get into, but it was it was a lot of fun, and I, I would recommend going to see it. It's not that far. It's a pretty inexpensive trip. You can go to New York City in the process. Anyway, Bills game. 22-17. Get the win. Offense, not good. Defense, pretty good most, most of the game. But special teams, pretty good most of the game except for one play. Starting with the offense, they obviously sputtered. Uh, they only had 13 first downs for the entirety of the game and 280 total yards, but they did run the ball pretty well. Sean McCoy comes through big, 159 total yards, and the Bills ran for 148 yards, which is right around their average, which is second best in the league, uh, against a top-ranked run defense, the Jets, who had only allowed about 88 yards, 87 or 88 yards running per game. So that, that's a big story right there. The Bills sort of set the edge with runs outside with McCoy, and... You know, the Jets started to respect that and started lining up outside and it opened up some holes up the middle. Sean McCoy was arguably the MVP of the game for the Bills. We'll talk about another defensive player who who probably takes that nod, but LaShawn McCoy gets an honorable mention. For, like I said, 159 total yards, 112 rushing, 47 receiving. His ability to make people miss, was it's, it's absurd. The, some of the things he does, the tackles he breaks, the way he gets away from guys. And then he gets, at the end of the game, he gets a big 16-yard run right up the middle that allows the Bills to take some more time off the clock and ultimately sort of ice the game for the Bills because the Jets use all their timeouts and had no time left. Still, the offense couldn't sustain their drives. Tyrod was sacked four times. He was hit hard some of those times where to the point where he's getting up kind of gimpy and you're like, jeez. The protection was not very good. Tyrod very rarely had a clean pocket. And it was kind of concerning because he felt like he was going to get hurt. That's how it felt. 
when he did have a clean pocket, he stood and delivered some pretty good throws. A couple nice, obviously, the there's the first play to Sammy, which I'll talk about in a second, but he had a couple quick outs to Sammy for easy first downs. Like, that's awesome. One late in the game, another that got you a first down. Like, um, the touchdown to Carlos Williams, stood tall in the pocket, delivers a strike for a touchdown. It's a great play. Uh, the game started on that Sammy play where... It sort of felt like Tennessee game, where you, you think you have points right away. You don't. The Tennessee game was off a penalty. And then your offense is just kind of garbage for the rest of the game. It kind of felt like Todd Bowles outcoached Greg Roman, which is it's weird to me because, a little side note, Charlie Cashley on NFL Network said that he thought Greg Roman called a very good game, and I was a little bit perplexed by that. Because I'm not going to take away from what they did on the ground, but... 13 first downs, they only have one drive where they went down and got a touchdown off, you know, they only scored one touchdown on offense, but yeah, on offense, they only scored one touchdown, it was a nice drive coming out of the half in the third quarter, but, I mean, a couple of other points were set up by turnovers, by the Jets, and uh, the Bills offense left much to be desired, there was some nice things to build on, but they left a lot to be desired. I guess you shouldn't be surprised, maybe, by Todd Bowles out-coaching Greg Roman because Todd Bowles used to be the defensive coordinator for Arizona and Greg Roman was the offensive coordinator for San Francisco, so they played each other all the time. So there's definitely some familiarity there. But Rex Ryan definitely out-coached Chan Gailey, as we have seen in the past as well. The defense came through when it mattered. Uh, you know, the Bills got up 22-3. to you really couldn't ignore the impending disaster that, you know, so here we go. Bills are up 22-3 to in the third quarter. They allow a touchdown really fast to make it 22-10. to Decker scores, and you're just thinking, here we go. Same story, different chapter. Standard Bills. And then when Colton Schmidt botches the punt, which is the negative play about special teams I was talking about, it was weird because Garrison Sanborn, this is a little side note, seemed, I, I, I rewatched the game when I got home, and it seemed like he was snapping them all to the right. And I'd never see Garrison Sanborn screw up, ever. He's very good at what he does. Maybe just weather, it was a little rainy, windy, I don't know. <clears throat> weird, it was weird. An anomaly. A Garrison Sanborn anomaly. But, the defense played tough and played big when it mattered. Because... They had a couple of huge fourth down stops. Uh, the first one, Darby just making a solo tackle on Marshall. The Jets saying, we're going to throw, we need two yards. We're going to throw it to Brandon Marshall at the line of scrimmage. Trust that he can beat your guy for two yards. Couldn't do it. Ronald Darby comes up huge. Ronald Darby was played big the whole game. Gilmore had a fantastic game as well. Marshall only had three catches, one huge drop, but that's on him. Um... Like I said, it shouldn't have come down to that. It shouldn't have come down to the last minute where Picard Rambo, who was probably the player of the game for the Bills, forcing three turnovers, two forced fumbles, and the game-stealing interception. Shouldn't have come down to that. Uh, shout out to Bacardi Rambo again, sorry, for AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Congratulations, my man. But the Bills didn't let it get away from them, which they have done a million times in the past. And now, suddenly... The AFC wild card is really kind of theirs to lose. There's two of them. Pittsburgh is right there. Oakland's in the mix. But the Bills have games coming up against Kansas City, against Houston, against the Jets again. So there's you, there's how you create separation. And this week brings the toughest test there is, the undefeated Patriots in Foxborough. Rex is 0-6 in his career at Foxborough in the regular season. Uh, he's 1-0 in the playoffs. Huge win. I'm sure everyone remembers that. Can't wait, Bart Scott says. But the Bills are the last team to beat the Patriots. Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. You can't tell me I'm wrong because the Bills are the last team to beat the Patriots. Tom Brady did start that game. He didn't finish it. But they beat them in Week 17. 17-9. What a glorious landmark win for this franchise. The Pats coming off a huge roller coaster win against the Giants. Um, they won the game, but they lose Julian Edelman. And the question really is, is at what point do all of these losses start to add up for the Patriots? And do they ever? Because they're definitely going to be without Deion Lewis this week. Obviously, he's on IR. They're definitely going to be without Edelman. 
they could be without Jamie Collins, who is dealing with some sort of sickness where he lost a lot of weight and strength. I don't that sucks, but that's life. I, I feel bad for him. I really do, because he's a terrific player. They might be without Sebastian Vollmer. They might be without Marcus Cannon. And it's like, wh when does this add up for these guys? Or is it true, which I believe, as long as they have Tom Brady, they'll be fine. And I firmly believe that. Because in week two, you thought, hey, the Bills are you know facing interior like rookie interior linemen. We have Marcel Darius. We have Kyle Williams. We should own these guys. We should get the middle. And it didn't matter. Didn't make a damn bit of difference. And I think Danny Amendola will almost seamlessly fill in for Julian Edelman. But Deion Lewis and Julian Edelman combined for 247 total yards and three touchdowns in Week Two against the Bills. That's you're giving up a lot there. They have. 1,337 of the Patriots, 3,878 total yards. That's 34%. But like I said, will it matter? This team just plugs and plays seemingly anyone. The only position this team struggles with ever, it seems, is cornerback. And that's why they won the Super Bowl last year, because they didn't. They had Revis and Browner, and they played out of their minds. And now they have this Coleman kid and Melvin, and they're, they're not good. They're not good players. That's, that's the matchup. That is it. Because they're making the second overall in offense. They average 418 yards per game. They're first in points per game, nearly 34. You know they're going to score that many points. They've been held to 27 the last two weeks. Wow. That's their lowest output of the season. 27. They're first in first downs per game, 24.8. They are first in third down percentage at 49%. And are third in yards per play, 6.2 yards per play. There's your test. I mean, I, you, can't, you obviously can't allow 40 points. Rex has said it. They need to play a zillion times better than they did in Week 2. It's pretty obvious. The Bills themselves are second in rushing, but they're 29th passing the ball, 200 yards per game. Not very good. And the Bills are 23rd overall on offense. Like I said, they're second in rushing, though. And New England, second against the run. Now, that might be look a little skewed because teams tend to pass in order to keep up with the Patriots. Um, and they, that number that didn't matter last week for the Bills against the Jets. The Jets were number one against the run. Didn't matter. The Bills ran for 148 yards. They got the W. Will it matter this week? Despite the fact the Bills are 23rd overall on offense, they're the only team to score more than 27 points against the Patriots, which they did in Week 2. I mean, a lot of that was in mop-up duty. Sure, maybe. But they had the ball with a minute to go down by one score. They ran for 160 yards in that game. That's the most New England has given up all season. And they passed, but they only passed for 189. They, Tyrod got sacked a wealth of times, which obviously hurts that. But it's the second fewest passing yards New England has given up all season. So the game comes down to, did you, did you learn anything? Did, do you have an injury advantage over the Patriots? I don't think so. But did you learn? what did you learn in Week 2? And let me see it. I know that the Bills... Now, you know, have this perceived injury advantage with, obviously, with Edelman and Lewis being out, and now Watkins and, well, he Watkins was healthy, and McCoy being, you know, very healthy, but you're without Kyle Williams and Aaron Williams now, so, I mean, it's not that much different. I just hope the Bills have been hungry since week two, since this loss, and just thinking, okay, we're going to get another shot at these guys. Let's take care of business, and we will see what we got. Let's take our best shot at the undefeated kings of the AFC East. Because you know, the, you know the book on them. Sustain your drives, run the football, keep Brady off the field, make Brady move laterally on offense. Like, we know. Nobody ever stops them. They're 9-0. And the last time the Bills played the Patriots and they were 9-0, we lost 56-10. to So, what are you going to do about Gronk? What are you going to do about Amendola? What are you going to do about Brady? What are you going to do on offense? These are all the questions that need to be answered. We're going to find out. Monday Night Football, it's exciting. This is, this is exciting. But what did I say in my last video? I will never, ever pick the Bills to beat the Patriots as long as Tom Brady's the quarterback. So I'm going to pick the Patriots to beat the Bills 34-24. to 24. Let me hear your opinions, guys. Um, reactions to the Jets, the Dolphins games, anything like that. What do you think, what do you think about New England? Let me know. Follow me on Twitter. My username is the same as my YouTube name. And as always, 
Go Bills!